Hey, I'm Mark Rhodes and welcome back to my workshop. I've got a question for you. What carries an e-cigarette vape and has been known to terrorize Tokyo? If you answered Japanese hipsters, you'd be right. If you answered Godzilla, you'd be wrong because if you'd been watching recent Godzilla movies, you'd know he's now a friend, an ally, and he doesn't terrorize Japanese cities anymore. My point? In this video, I'm going to take some advice from those Japanese hipsters, pick up a vape and make a full-blown Godzilla diorama that can light up and blow smoke. Keep watching. Ever since I was a kid, I had a fascination with Kaiju and Godzilla. And because I also want to be cool like teenagers, I want to play with an e-cigarette. I'm going to incorporate this vape cartridge along with NeoPixels and 3D printing in order to make a fully working Godzilla diorama. And I think I'm going to have him light up with lightning crackling along his spine and smoke shooting out of his mouth and Godzilla himself standing in a violent ocean. As with all 3D printing projects, I'm going to need a model. And I'm going to use this incredible model by Chaos Core Tech. The link to download the model is in the video description below. It's not free. It'll only set you back though about the price of a cup of coffee. And that is peanuts for the insane quality of this model. It prints support free and every single print of it I've seen has been absolutely gorgeous. So let's chuck that into the printer and get into the build.
check out Godzilla. <coughs> so let's do a quick recap of this build video. I got Godzilla out of the printer, cut him open, gave him a NeoPixel strip enema, and then inserted and glued a brass tube in his mouth. Sorry, buddy. Then I painted him mostly with an airbrush, scratched out the paint on his spine in order to allow the, the light to show through when the NeoPixels fire. The smoke coming out of Godzilla's mouth is issuing from a tube that was inserted into his mouth. It's glued in place with epoxy. Now, if you wondered why I used epoxy instead of superglue, that's because epoxy holds so much better to this kind of UV resin than superglue does. Once that was done, once that was done, I combined that with a cheap e-cigarette vape cartridge, a small aquarium air pump, a relay, an Arduino, and a battery together in order to drive both the smoke and the NeoPixels. I also whipped up a quick custom base in Fusion 360 with holes for the NeoPixel wires and the smoke tube. And then I printed out in PETG on my artillery sidewinder, gave it a light sand, covered the base in superglue and bicarb, which gave it a really cool looking terrain based, which I then gave a quick paint job to, epoxy Godzilla on top of it, dammed the whole thing up in acrylic and hot glue, and then filled it up with a tinted resin. Once that resin had cured, I painted on ocean waves, installed the electronics, and it was done. Am I happy with it? Look at this thing, it is fantastic. I, I honestly didn't think it would turn out this nicely, and I'm really happy with it. This was my first attempt doing a few of these things, and I was able to bumble my way through them. For instance, I'd never used a vape cartridge before, and that bit went quite well. The trickiest bit was soldering the connectors onto the cartridge, as it's kind of a hack. I already have another project in mind where I'll be using more of these, and I've got a much better solution than soldering directly onto these really hard to solder onto terminals. The ocean waves were also really a first, as I'd never even tried to do this before. But you know what? It came out flawlessly. And the reason? I think I can thank both Norm and Kate from Tested, as their video on water effects gave me some great insights on how to work with water surfaces like this. So with that in mind, what lessons did I learn? Lesson number one, I have officially given up on liquid masking fluid. It never works as I expect, and every single time I use it, I regret it. In this case, I tried to use it to mask the lightning spots on Godzilla's spine so that I could just peel it off and have the light showing through. But the surface tension of the fluid just drew it in out of all the cracks that I'd put it into and brought it across all of the entire surface and I ended up spending hours scrubbing and swearing in order to get rid of it. Seriously, just removing liquid masking fluid from this spine took about six hours of wasted time. I'll never use that crap again. Scratching the paint was a much better option. Tip number two, resin damming. Next time I pour resin, I'm going to use three or maybe even four layers of hot glue to dam the stuff up because when it leaks, it's such a damn pain in the neck. I also like to figure out a better way to dam the resin without leaving a very thin layer on some of the walls of the base. Now that's just an aesthetic thing, but I figure there has to be an easier way to work with it. Number three, I was chatting to my friend Cam straight after I'd built the prototype for the smoke. And when I showed him a video, he suggested that the smoke's flow was a little bit too straight and that I crimp the end of the tube. Godzilla smoke was shooting out in such a very straight line and while it looked kind of like the movie's effect, it just looked wrong for the model. By crimping the tube a little, the flow became that much more violent and looked much more like you'd expect it to, rather than the straight kind of look of the movie, and that suits the model much better. Always go with what looks cool. Aside from those little things, this went extremely well and I'm thrilled with the results. I now have my own Godzilla model, and every time I push the button on the front, his spine is going to crackle with lightning and smoke is going to spew out of his mouth. While it's not the same franchise, I'm going to look forward to have this sitting next to my Gypsy Danger from Pacific Rim that I finished not long ago in my display cabinet. I think they're going to look great together. So that's my build. If you're interested in doing one of these for yourself, I've put the links to the model, the custom base, the Arduino code, the wiring schematic, and the parts list in the description down below. And honestly, it's a pretty easy build as long as you've got some epoxy, hot glue, and a soldering iron. And you know what I'd like to see? A gigantic one of these. That would be epic. 
As this is the end of the video, if you have any suggestions on things I could have done better here, or if you've got something you'd like to see me build in the future, drop me a comment down below. And as always, if you enjoyed what I'm doing here, hit the like and subscribe buttons. Thank you for watching. Now go make something.